The six-month commissioning window for James Webb is yielding some intriguing results. I'm Eric Malachite, and today on Science Get, we're talking about how the James Webb Space Telescope could be used to watch our solar backyard for asteroids and unlock the mysteries of our solar system. James Webb recently finished its calibrations. Now the team behind the groundbreaking space telescope is testing to see what sort of objects both near and far the telescope will be able to study throughout its proposed 20-year lifespan. The asteroid in question, 6841 Tenzing, an asteroid with a radius of 4.4 kilometers that resides within the main belt. The main asteroid belt is located between Mars and Jupiter and is on average about 179.5 and 329 million kilometers from the Earth. For scale reference, Earth is about 151 kilometers from the Sun. So the asteroid belt is anywhere from nearly as close as the Sun is to the Earth within about 20 million kilometers to being about twice as far. Real quick, before we continue, I want you all to check out my new Lovecraftian analog horror channel. Link is in the pinned comment, so check it out if you're in need of a good scare. NASA's blog mentions that James James Webb is designed to observe galaxies and other distant objects, but it's also going to be keeping an eye on local objects as well. James Webb wasn't the first telescope to track an asteroid, though. Astronomers discovered a surprise in photographs that were stored in the Hubble archives. These images allowed astronomers to catalog orbits of a bunch of main belt asteroids. But the key thing to note is that this observation was a total accident. James Webb, on the other hand, has observed 6841 Tenzing in fairly extensive detail, shown in these images here. In perspective, it's incredible that a telescope that was designed to detect the faintest light of the first galaxies is able to image an asteroid of this size at that distance in such detail. But what does this mean for Webb's future? Heidi Hamill is the Vice President for Science at the Association of Universities for Research in Astronomy, or abbreviated as AURA. Hamill is also part of a team working with James Webb that will be taking a deep look at our solar backyard. And she had some interesting things to say about what the tracking test of 6841 Tenzing means for her team's future. And that future is focused on the myriad of mysteries lurking in the shadows of our solar system. Once the commissioning period for James Webb's instruments is done, and the first year of science observations is underway, Hamill and her team are going to be taking deep looks at ocean worlds in particular. It's long been thought that distant moons like Europa and Enceladus have subsurface oceans thanks to tidal heating from Jupiter and Saturn, respectively. But Miranda, Ariel, Umbriel, and Titania are all additional candidates for subsurface oceans as well, and James Webb will focus its instruments on them in the first year to prove once and for all whether or not those theories hold water. Huh. Get it? Holds water. The most intriguing thing about what Hamill said in this blog, though, is that she and her team use telescopes in conjunction with in situ missions, meaning physical missions to a location. Could this then mean that we'll be getting a flyby or orbital mission to Europa, or really any of these other moons, along with some stunning images from James Webb in the next couple of years? For my money, I want to see some detailed stuff on Europa. Here's hoping for subsurface squid aliens. But that's not all, either, because Webb is going to be studying two other objects in our solar system that have only had one flyby mission each. And those are, drumroll please, thank you computer, the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. But even that's not the end, because James Webb is going to be observing the rings of Saturn, Kuiper Belt objects beyond the orbit of Pluto, Mars's atmosphere, and far more than that. All told, the blog suggests that the majority of Webb's time will be focused on the distant reaches of our universe, exoplanets, the first galaxies, born after the Big Bang, and so on and so forth. But 7% of the telescope's time will be devoted to our own solar system. And while I wasn't initially excited about the discoveries that might come from such an effort, when compared to the stuff in the distant reaches, I am now. I guess I'm just a sucker for the unknown. But what do you think? Does this make you excited for James Webb's future observations? Let me know down below. If you dug this video, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz and like, comment, subscribe. Super thanks to get your name and the patron role in the next video. Ring that bell and share this video with someone who loves space and science. And hey, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.